Sup? Title of this video is pretty self-explanatory. This is going to be a video series on The Women of Troy by Euripides, translated by Don Taylor. Uh, now just keep in mind that these videos are mostly just a summary. There might be nuggets of analysis in there somewhere when I get a little bit carried away, but for the most part, just yeah, keep in mind that this is a summary merely. Okay, so the first thing that we need to start with is a bit of background. Now, please note that this isn't going to start in chronological order. We're going to be jumping around a little bit. So if you need to, get out a pen and paper and take notes. Uh, we'll course correct by the end of this introduction, but this is probably just the most logical way to approach these characters and the context to the play. So, the first thing that you need to know, and this is super basic, is that there are two peoples, right? We've got the Trojans and the Greeks. The Greeks comprising of the Spartans and the Athenians. Now, for the sake of clarity, we'll just stick to referring to them as the Greeks, right? Trojans and the Greeks. Now, as per the text, the Trojans are good and the Greeks are bad. Yeah, Trojans good, Greeks bad. Got it? Cool. Now, I would argue that it is most sensible to start with Menelaus and Helen. Now, Menelaus is the king of Sparta, which is a city-state in ancient Greece that is at war with Troy, the war known as the Trojan War, which spanned 10 years. Now, Helen, who is considered the most beautiful mortal in all of creation, so, you know, Emma Watson, uh, was his wife. Now, before anything else, that is the first thing that you need to know, that Menelaus, the king of Sparta, was married to Emma Watson. Now, I mean Helen, uh, the, most, the most beautiful woman in all of creation. Uh, and they're both Greeks, yeah? Now, the next three characters that you need to know are Athena, or Athene, if we're using the name from this translation, who is the goddess of war, among other things. Then there is Hera, the goddess of marriage and fertility, who is also Zeus's sister slash wife. Uh, and then there is Aphrodite, who is the goddess of love and beauty. Now, I don't want to go too far into the story because a lot of this is not explicitly mentioned in the play anyway. Uh, but basically, each of the three goddesses wanted to lay claim to the golden apple of discord, which is basically an apple upon which was the approximate Greek translation of the words to the fairest or to the most beautiful. Now, the way it's told in the play is that these three goddesses were at odds with each other because they wanted to determine who it was among them that should be counted the most beautiful goddess among all the goddesses, um, and therefore who it was between them that should be the rightful owner of this apple. Now, in order to determine this, it was decided that an impartial third party would be appointed to judge their beauty. Now, it just so happens that this was Paris, who is the next character that you need to be familiar with. Now, Paris was a Trojan prince, um, so he was from Troy. He was not from Sparta. He was not a Greek like Menelaus and Helen. Now, naturally, the goddesses all decided to try and bribe Paris in order to claim his judgment as the most beautiful of the goddesses. Now, Athene, being the war goddess, offered Paris leadership of a Trojan expeditionary force that would take out the whole of Greece. So this is a quote from the text. Uh, so she offered him military power sufficient to conquer all of Greece. Now, Hera bribed him by claiming that she would make him master of Europe and the whole of Asia. And finally, Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, offered Paris Helen's hand in marriage. She described how beautiful Helen was and promised that if Paris chose her, then Helen would be his for the taking. Now remember, this is despite the fact that Helen is already married to Menelaus in Sparta, uh, and Paris is a Trojan. Now to little surprise, Paris elected Aphrodite as the most beautiful and in doing so, claimed Helen as his prize and eloped with her, bringing her back to Troy. Uh, this was all allegedly against Helen's will, but ipso facto, that's how we end up with Helen of Troy, as you've probably heard her being called before. Now, it's important to acknowledge the ramifications of this decision. Now, because Paris chose Aphrodite, Aphrodite had no reason to side against Paris when the Trojan War began, so she is relatively left unmentioned throughout the rest of the play. Now, Athene and Hera, however, they were pissed that Paris did not choose them, and as a result, were antagonistic not just towards Paris, but to all Trojans, because Paris was a Trojan. So divine vengeance and all that, it's pretty crazy. Now, because of this antagonistic relationship with Paris, both Athene and Hera supported the Greeks when the war began, and that's important because that will factor in later. Now, back to Paris and Helen eloping to Troy. Now, understandably, Menelaus was hella pissed about this, so much so that he initiates the 10-year war in order to find and reclaim her. This 10-year war being known as the Trojan War, which culminated with the complete and utter destruction of Troy, but also the death of many, many Greek soldiers. The same war during which the Greeks were supported by Athene and Hera. 
Now, after 10 years of war, it was Odysseus, who was another Greek lord, who conceptualized the Trojan horse. And this you're probably familiar with to some extent. Now, it was a large horse built from wood that the Greeks offered to the Trojans as a token of surrender, as well as a gift to the war goddess Athene. Now, accepting this gift, uh, the Trojans brought the horse within the walls and celebrated, uh, at which point it was revealed that the horse was housing Greek soldiers who promptly emerged, killed all the men, and then enslaved all the women and children. The Greeks then proceeded to destroy Troy and burn it to the ground, and it is within the ruins of Troy that our story begins. So, just to dot point out chronologically for you, Golden Apple of Discord addressed to the fairest, beauty contest between Athene, Hera, and Aphrodite, Paris is appointed as the judge, the goddesses all bribe Paris to win his favor, Paris chooses Aphrodite since she promises him Helen as his bride, Paris elopes with Helen, both of them returning to Troy, Menelaus gets hella pissed and vindictive, Menelaus gets his boys and goes to war to get Helen back. Menelaus is also supported by Athene since she is pissed at Paris. Fast forward 10 years of war, Odysseus conceptualizes the Trojan horse, which allows the Greeks to infiltrate and destroy Troy, and then the play begins within this destruction that has taken place. So, really, all the chaos and destruction and the discord that transpires is because of a damn apple the rightly named Golden Apple of Discord, named after the goddess of Discord, which is Eris, E-R-I-S. Uh, now again, a lot of this is not mentioned explicitly in the play. There was a lot of assumed knowledge at the time the play was written and performed. Uh, the Greeks maintained the very oral tradition of storytelling, so everyone already knew this. If you would like to read up more on that, then legit just Google Golden Apple of Discord or Eris, the goddess of discord. Now, the only reason she left that apple for the other goddesses to fight her in the first place was because she didn't get invited to a wedding. So she was like, ah, oh, you didn't invite me to your wedding? Lol, have fun fighting over this damn apple, you stuck up. But anyway, we're digressing. To the play, 